everyone, welcome back to my channel or hello if you are new here. My name is Kayla and I am a first grade teacher, wife and a mom to two. Today's video is a q and A. I've gotten a lot of questions on Instagram and TikTok so I figured why not just answer the questions here so everyone can see. If you don't already follow me over on um, Instagram and TikTok, make sure you go find me over there. I post a lot of fun content over there. Um, my handle is life in first for both of them. And if you like videos like this or teacher videos, if you're gonna be a teacher, um, I would love if you consider subscribing. Click the notification bell so you can be notified when I post a new video. There's no going back, no going back. There's no going back to your own life. I'm living in the past, we're over that. I'm feeling it tonight, riding on the dizzying heights. Sunsets, remember the colors They were wrong, it was way more than a dream We climbed up, yeah, over the hillside It's so alright, we stood there all wide-eyed You and I, floating on air in my mind Cause there's no going back, no going back There's no going back to your own life Not living in the past I'm feeling it tonight, riding on the dizzying heights going to go into the building today and get some of my um, things to plan for next week and show you guys the desk pads like up in person I did take some clips of them so I can show you for my Q&A today but I just got the message that schools are closed because there's tree limbs down and power outages all over the county so it's from the ice the ice I guess we had um, the day off yesterday because of ice so I guess I'm just gonna do the q and A. I've got a lot of questions um, from Instagram and TikTok. I'll do the teacher q and A and just kind of go about my day and show you what I am thinking about doing for next week because I didn't really get much time to plan. And I might go into the building on Sunday if um, my admin lets me go in on Sunday. I normally never go in on the weekends. Actually, I've never gone in on the weekends. But since I haven't been at school since Wednesday, I don't want to go in Monday not planned at all. And I don't want to go into Monday like two hours early because I will have my daughter with me. She's in kindergarten, so I don't want to make her get up super early to go to school with me. So I'm gonna go make some breakfast and then I will get myself set up for this Q&A. It is so pretty outside. It's all icy. Let me show you, look at that. It's so cool. I'm not going anywhere today because I don't want to drive near any ice, but so pretty. Oh geez, I almost slipped it's icy on my front porch. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna head upstairs and start my Q&A. Okay, let's get into the questions. So, the first question is, how do you keep yourself from burning out as a teacher? And I've definitely felt this a lot, and I think the main thing is finding something new to motivate you, whether it's a new teaching strategy, whether it's um, uh, seeing the young teachers on TikTok that I've seen. I know it sounds silly, but they've motivated me by seeing their energy and their excitement. It's kind of brought it back in me because I thought I used to be just like that. I used to be super motivated. I would um, be excited to go to work every day, and I can be that still, even if I am in my ninth year of teaching. Um, I think finding new uh, new teaching strategies, new technology resources, new crafts, going on Pinterest, those things always spark something in me. Um, also, if you're feeling burnt out, take a mental health day. Use your personal days, use your sick leave. Don't be afraid to use your leave. I know um, when I was younger, I was trying to save up for maternity leave, but now that I've had my children and I'm done with it, like if I wanna take a day off, I'm taking a day off. I'm setting boundaries. I'm not staying super late at work. I'm not going in super early. 
um, because that will burn me out. So th that would be my advice for um, avoiding burnout. And is, can you show your classroom? I've shown my classroom in a couple other videos. I will try to find some pictures to insert here, um, but I can do another classroom tour soon once I've got everything completely done. But if you look at this video, which I will put in the cards here, um, that is kind of the most recent classroom tour. What inspired you to pick first grade? <clears throat> I actually got my bachelor's degree in elementary education and I really wanted to be an elementary school teacher. I wasn't sure on what grade, but I knew I didn't want it to be like fourth or fifth. Well, shocker, my first job was a fifth grade teacher. I did not love it, so I switched to third grade. Luckily, there was an opening. Um, I then decided I want to stick with third and below, so I'm going to get my master's in early childhood because I want to stick with that. I taught third grade for five years, then I tried to, um, then I applied to the district I'm currently in, and I thought, I have a degree in early childhood. I am for sure getting an early childhood classroom. No, actually I got a sixth grade special education position and I took it because that's what was available. And I think that's the thing I've had some people ask like, what's, what's your advice? I really want to teach kinder. I really want to teach this grade. You're probably not going to get the grade you want at first, but after nine years, I finally got the grade I want, which is first grade. I've always dreamed about teaching K or one and you just have to go into it with an open mind. And if they throw you a third or fourth grade position, you know, and you don't know um, if you're gonna get another position, I would take it because you can always switch. Um, and that's that's what I did. So now I'm happy, um, it took me a long time, and sometimes you might get your kindergarten or first grade job immediately, but sometimes you won't, and sometimes admin can move you involuntarily to a different grade. So I wouldn't get your heart stuck in a specific grade, maybe early childhood or intermediate, or elementary versus secondary. I think that would be like a safer bet. Next question is how do you deal with discipline of a kid or maybe when they hit, kick, or bully someone? So I think most um, schools or districts have their own um, behavior management plan or some type of system if you're a PBIS school. At this time, we don't do anything specific, but develop relationships with your students. You treat your classroom as a family and you have to teach empathy, you have to teach kindness. And Sometimes if it's not taught at home or if the kids are struggling with it, like we teach it, we do lessons on it. We, we need to put little plastic buckets up and have people fill buckets every day or write notes of kindness every day. Those are just little things you do to develop that community and to teach kindness and empathy. So as far as dealing with the behaviors, it just depends on the school. Um, I always think it's important to talk to the child, develop a relationship with them, develop a relationship with their family to know what they're going through at home might be impacting what's happening in the classroom and you have to kind of react to every situation differently depending on those factors. So um, I like to use motivational tools. I just posted on TikTok that I use desk pets as like little motivational tools to kind of root the kids on and you know motivate them to do a good job, motivate them to be kind and stay focused. Um, I don't believe in taking rewards away. Once I give a reward you can keep it but I also think that students that are doing a great job or meeting their goals can get rewarded for their goals. So that's kind of a big question. It just depends on your school. Um, you don't want to go ahead and do something major without getting approval from your admin. What was your favorite activity when you were a student? Um, I would say project-based activities. I didn't like working independently. I struggled as a kid um, in school. So I like projects because we could kind of pull on each other's strengths and weaknesses and I like to do that in the classroom as well. With the safety precautions now in the classroom it's a little hard but when things get back to normal I'd like to do more project based learning. Do you share your personal life with your students? I want to become a teacher. Um, I share just enough. I don't share too much private, um, private things because again I want to keep that boundary. Um, my students know I'm married, they know I have two kids, they know I love Disney, they know my hobbies, and I think that's important so that you can develop those relationships with your students and see if you have things in common with them and they can feel comfortable with you. Um, they know what I like to do, they, um, I mean, they don't know a lot of my personal stuff, so I think it's just surface level is really good to know um, so that they can um, feel comfortable talking to you, having something maybe they could relate to, especially if you're in middle or high school. Definitely share about yourself, but within reason, set boundaries for sure. How did you decide you wanted to become first grade teacher? I kind of answered that one. Um, I always knew I wanted early childhood and I just kept pushing along until I got the job and I finally did. How do you keep your students focused? 
um, again, it's those motivational tools. It's um, keep going like all day, like give them brain breaks, give them uh, breaks to move around, flexible seating. I've got little uh, stools, balancing stools. I've got little, I think they're called like um, little squishy things they can sit on. I let them use fidgets. I let them, I let them play as long as they can stay focused up and play with the fidgets or hold the balls. Um, sit in little rockers when they're doing silent reading and I try to switch up the activities all the time. I don't want them to get bored. So I think that's a key in keeping them motivated. You don't want them bored. You don't want them sitting around, looking around of what to do. Always have something for them to do. Um, and then of course, you know, motivating them with what's gonna happen next. Getting them excited for the day. Telling them what we're gonna do for the day. Telling them the schedule. Telling them how much fun we're gonna have. Once we're done this, we're gonna do X, Y, Z. So I think that's, uh, you know, in addition to the reward systems that are motivating, I think there's other tools that you can do that can be motivating as well. Your name, Miss Nelson, it reminded me of the kids' book, Miss Nelson's Missing. Yes, I read that at the beginning of the year every year. How do you make your students focus on activities in circle time? How can a teacher improve the behavior of students? Again, I always bring it back to the relationship, back to setting the rules and boundaries and knowing your students and knowing why one might be behaving poorly or why one might not be focused as well, especially in the younger grades. Um, and differentiating what you're doing to help them. So maybe they can't sit in the circle. Maybe like they're too distracted by having someone next to them and they need to sit back at their desk or they want to sit right next to you. You know, there's just always things that you can do to accommodate for those students because not one size does not fit all and teachers, young teachers are going to realize that really quickly. One size does not fit all. The behavior of students is just giving them positive reinforcement, um, frequent eye contact, letting them move around a bit, um, just back to keeping their interest. Was it nerve wracking when you were student teaching? Oh my goodness. I, even after teaching nine years, I cannot handle when someone's watching me teach. Whether I, whether I'm getting observed or when I was student teaching, like it just, it made me so nervous. I don't know why I can like film myself teaching. I can talk to YouTube. I can talk to, um, I mean, I'm a Leo. Like I, I don't mind being the center of attention. I just seeing me do something like I'm supposed to be good at. And if I, wasn't I have the anxiety of like what if I didn't do a good job or something it always stressed me out so I think that's totally normal to be nerve-wracking for um, student teaching but just know that your mentor teacher wants to be a mentor teacher because they want to help you I really hope one day I can be a mentor teacher that's my next goal because I do want to help teachers and I like helping them um, I've had some interns before and I'm just like go teach like I I really I understand like I want you to go do it and not be nervous but I think it's just natural. So I would say if you are nervous, just go into it like knowing that they want you to do a good job and just to be yourself and um, be open to their feedback because that essentially the student teaching is gonna be your, the thing you remember most. I mean, for me, it was the thing I remember most and helped me like get my skills ready for when I started teaching on my own. And my last question is advice for going back to work after having kids. Um, I think my biggest advice is just to set boundaries and put your family first. Um, I had Bailey at, um, when I was teaching third grade and I was driving an hour to and from work and I wouldn't get home till super late and then after I put her to bed, I ended up working on my computer and I was just so stressed out. I decided to um, quit that school, move to the district that, was, that I was living in and that's when I got the middle school job. So she was a toddler and I was able to um, set my boundaries a little more and focus more on home and leave work at work. Once I was teaching there, I got pregnant with my son and I just decided I'm gonna stay home for two years and take care of them because I had a hard time being away from them when I was working when they were little. Two years later, I um, put them both in preschool and then I started teaching again. So I think that two year break really helped me kind of um, reset, refresh and realize what my priorities were and I just had to set boundaries and if I had to go in early or had to stay in late I just made arrangements and I kind of made a schedule so that I didn't get stressed out about it but I definitely think setting boundaries is important and knowing that your kids come first your family comes first and um, we're not all gonna get everything done we're just not gonna get everything done but um, the next day will come and even if we are less organized than we used to be it's okay because we got to set those boundaries for our own mental health and for our family so um, those were my other questions. I had more, but I kind of answered them all together. Some of them were very similar. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And again, please subscribe if you want to see more content like this and find me over on Instagram and TikTok at Life in First. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.